Hey guys, in this video we're going to be working with nav link proxies and we're going to start off with the basics. We're going to control the flow of traffic through these three doors. So we're going to have this as an exit door, an entrance door, and then we're going to use the middle door to kind of demonstrate how we do that. So let's go ahead and see it in action first. If he wants to come out of the building, he's got to use the exit door. If he wants to go back in, he's got to choose the entrance door. So now let's go ahead and jump into the editor and we'll see how we do that and we'll test it out here in the middle door. Okay, so here in the editor we can see that we have a nav mesh on both sides of the wall and they're connected by these green lines and these green lines are called nav link proxies and each link points in a specific direction. So for example this link was pointed from this side of the nav mesh to that side and this link was pointed from this nav mesh to that one and that's how we were creating the entrance and exit doors. So now let's use the middle door, we'll create a new nav link and we'll have it be two-way traffic. So to do that, we're gonna go over here to place actor and we're gonna search for nav link and we're gonna choose this one here. So when you first start out, you're not gonna have this blueprint, we're gonna create that later on. You're gonna choose this one and just go ahead and drag it in in front of a door and we just want to take one of the nodes here and we want to extend it to the other nav mesh. So these nodes have to be touching a nav mesh in order for this to work. And if we look at this text here, we can see that this is the left node and this is the right node. So now if we come over to the details panel, if we look under simple link and we scroll down and we see direction, we can make it left to right, right to left or in this case, we're gonna make it point both ways. And let's go ahead and check out what that looks like. We'll start with the first door. We'll see if he can come out and if he can go back in. Then we'll come over to this door. This was the exit door. He can come out it, but he can't go back in. He has to choose a different door. And this was the entrance door. We'll see if he can come out, which he can't. He'll have to choose a different door, but he can still go in it. Okay, so that's how we can go ahead and control the flow of traffic through these three doors. Now we'll move on and see some other stuff that we can do with these nav links. Okay, so here in this example, we want the character to jump down from this ledge to the lower level. So it's a quick and easy thing. We're just gonna go back into the editor and we'll come over here. And again, we just pull in a nav link proxy and we just wanna align it with the nav mesh. And then we'll take one of the nodes and we'll drag it across and we'll lower it down to the nav mesh. And let's go ahead and see that in action. So we'll come down here, and now the character is able to jump down to the lower level. Okay, in the next section, we'll move on to jumping up to a higher ledge. And in this example here, we want the character to jump from a lower level up to a higher level. So to do that, we need to create something called a smart nav link. So let's exit out of the game and we'll go down to the content browser and we'll make a new blueprint class and we'll search for nav link and it'll be this first one here. We'll go ahead and create it and let's give it a name and then let's go ahead and open it. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is delete all of these. Now before we make our function, let's go ahead and create some variables that we'll need. So we'll make the first one and we're gonna make it a character type. And we'll use object reference character. And I'm just gonna rename this jump character. And then let's create another one and we'll make this new one a float. And I'm gonna name this jump arc. And I'm gonna make it instance editable. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste this two more times. And this first one is going to be base mod. And the second one is going to be special mod. Now, really quick, let's talk about what these are. The character is going to be the character who's doing the jump. It's going to be a reference to him. And then the jump arc, that's going to be a float that we're going to use to influence the uh, the trajectory of the jump itself, whether we want it to be more vertical or horizontal. The base mod, that's going to be a hidden value that you're going to use to kind of 
tweak the velocity output uh, that's calculated. And sometimes you'll need to do that if you're trying to have it jump at a weird angle or jump over an obstacle. You're going to need to kind of add a little bit of a hidden modifier to what the function calculated on its own. And then special mod is something that the player can influence themselves. So for instance, if they pick up a power up or a, some sort of jet pack or booster or something like that, then you can add more power to the jump through this variable. It can be a positive variable like a, like a power up or it can be a negative amount. Like for instance, if the character is over encumbered, maybe you want to reduce his jumping power. So you can have as many of these as you need and we're just going to use one for this video. Now let's go ahead and start the actual function. The first node that we want to add, we're going to search for event received and we'll choose this one right here, event received smart link reached. This is when a character, whether it's your player character or an AI character, this is when they reach the nav link and they want to initiate a jump from one side to the other. So we'll set our character reference off of this agent parameter. Now we can't go directly from the agent parameter to the character reference because this is an actor reference and that's a character reference. So we'll come down here and we'll go cast to character and we'll convert this to a pure cast. And now we can go ahead and plug it in. And after we set that character reference, we want to do a velocity calculation. So we'll type in suggest and we'll see this one here, suggest projectile velocity custom arc. So that's basically just saying it's going to calculate a velocity arc between point A and point B. So point A is going to be where the, the character is standing. So we'll do get actor location. And we'll plug that into the start position. And the end position is just the destination of the jump. So we'll go ahead and bring that across. And after we've done that, we want to reveal these other parameters here. We're not too interested in overriding the gravity, but we are interested in arc parameter. And it says in the tooltip, change height of arc between 0 and 1, where 0.5 is the default medium arc, 0 is more vertical, and 1 is more horizontal. So we want to be able to manipulate this value during the game. So we'll bring in this variable that we created earlier and we'll plug it in. And we'll set the default value as the tooltip suggested at 0.5. And we'll go ahead and compile and save. And then after that, we want to bring out a delay node. And this delay node is really just going to be a placeholder for now. It's kind of used so that the velocity calculation has time to make sure that the character is actually on the starting position. And it's also you can use it if you're going to do some custom animation where maybe the character will crouch and bend his knees before he jumps. You can replace this delay node later with an event dispatcher from your animation, but we'll just stay with this for now. And after all of this calculation, we want to get the character and we, we want him to actually perform the jump. So we'll use the launch command for that, launch character. And let's go ahead and hook all this up. And we want to override the X, Y, and Z because those are the, the directions he's going to be launched in. And the launch velocity is what was calculated over here. But before we plug it in, we want to modify this value. So we'll go multiply by a float. And the the float that we want to multiply by, it's going to be the combined value of all of our mods. Now we're only using two in this video, but you might have more. So we'll bring in the first one and we'll say get, and then we'll do add float plus float. And again, if you need more pins, you can click that button there, but I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use the, the two that we have and I'll bring in the other mod that we made and I'll plug it in there. And so the combined value of all these mods, that's what's going to multiply against the calculated velocity and that new velocity, that's what's going to actually launch the player. So now let's talk about these two mods real quick. Again, as I mentioned before, the, the base mod is just a hidden value that you can use to tweak this calculation here 
if you need to get it to go a little higher or lower. So we'll just put it to default as 1, because anything times 1 is just itself. So by default, it's not going to have any effect. You would need to manually come in here and start adjusting it during your testing phase. And then the special mod, that's going to be default 0, because it's not going to apply unless the character actually does something during the game. Like they pick up a power-up, or again, if their inventory is over-encumbered and they can only jump half as high. So that, that value will be manipulated at runtime. So other than that, that's the entire function. And we're ready to compile and save. And let's go ahead and check it out in-game. Okay, we'll come back here and we'll pull in our new uh, smart link and we'll align it on the nav mesh. And then once we have it aligned, we need to come over here to the details panel. And this time under smart link, we're going to hit copy endpoints from sim simple link to smart link. And then we're going to come down here and check smart link is relevant. And then let's go ahead and save it and try it in game. And let's test out the smart link that we just placed. All right, good. He's able to jump up. He's also able to jump back down it. So if we want to control the flow of traffic on a smart link, what we need to do is go back to the editor. And under smart link, we see the option to place the link direction, but that's not going to work because what you're doing is you're copying from the simple link. And you see it, it goes back to both ways again. So what we do is we come up here to the simple link and we place the direction here, let's say left to right. Now when we copy from at the smart link, now it will retain that, that setting. So now we can go ahead and try that out. He's still able to jump left to right, which in this case is jumping up, but he's no longer able to jump down that one because we disabled right to left. Okay, I'm going to go back and put it to both ways again. So I come back up to simple link. And I'll put it to both ways. And then down here in Smart Link, it's still at left to right, but I'll hit Copy. And now it's set to both ways. So let's go ahead and see if that worked. So he'll be able to jump up. And he'll be able to jump back down. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and see some other things that we can do with Smart Links. Okay, and in this example, we want the character to make a horizontal jump over this trench. So let's go ahead and see him do that first. Okay. And now one thing we want to look at is if we go back into the editor, the arch kind of comes up into the air like this. And on a small jump like this, it may not make that much of a difference. But let's say you wanted to see him kind of jump on a flatter trajectory, since this is a sort of a horizontal jump then what we're going to do is we're going to come down to this jump arc parameter that we set. And if we remember the tooltip, it said the closer to one we set it, the more horizontal the jump will be. Well, I've already kind of uh, tested it out, so I know what setting I want to put it at. Um, I'm just going to bump it up to 0.6. Now, because this is a small jump, I don't have to bump it up that much. But if it was a larger jump, you'd probably have to choose a larger value. But let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, and we see that he had a much a lower jump and it was much more horizontal rather than arcing up into the air. So again, on a small jump like this, uh, visually it may not make that much of a difference, but that'll come in handy when you have larger jumps. Now let's go ahead and move on to another example. Okay, so in this example, we want to see the character perform a vertical jump to get to this top ledge. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Okay, now let's go back into the editor and see how we do that. So here in the editor, we can see the arch of the nav links that we place down. And if you notice, we place them in a narrow, tall fashion instead of pulling this one back and then having a gradual arc all the way up. And this is because we wanted to create sort of a trampoline effect where the character is propelled straight up and then lands on the top ledge. Now one thing we need to pay attention to is that we set the jump arc parameter down to 0.25 to match this narrow arc. 
if we didn't do that, we'll put it back to the default 0.5, then the calculation would be expecting the more gradual arc. And let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if we forget to update that value. We'll go to play, and then we'll try to make the jump, and he's going to gradually arc right into the side of the wall. So what we want to do is go back to our editor, and we'll put this down to 0.25, and let's try that again. And this time it's going to calculate along a more vertical path. And so that's how we're going to create that trampoline effect and get to the top ledge. Now before we move on, there's one more thing we want to look at. So we're going to go back to the editor. And we'll just come down to the jump base mod. And we're going to lower it to 0.75. And this will make the character too weak to make the jump. So what they're going to have to do is come over to this blue flag, which is surrounded by a sphere collision and they're going to collect a power up and that's going to feed into the jump special mod and it's going to put the 0.25 back which will allow them to complete the jump. So let's head on over into the blueprint and set up the special mod. Okay, here in the blueprint I just quickly have an on actor begin overlap for that sphere collision and when the character overlaps it it's just going to get the blue jump and it's going to take its jump special jump parameter and it's going to increase it by 0.25 and then it'll print it out so that we know it's working. So let's go ahead and check it out in game. So first we'll have him try and complete the blue jump without the power up and of course he's going to be too weak to do it. Now let's go get the power up and we'll come back and we'll try to do the jump again and this time he'll be strong enough to complete it. Okay, let's head on to another example. Okay, and for this last example, we're going to collect two power-ups. The first one will be for the blue jump, which we already did, and the second one will be for the red jump, which is on this ledge here. We'll collect the power-up and jump to the final ledge and complete the level. All right, let's go into the editor and see how we do that. So here in the editor, we have the blue jump and the blue power-up, which we already set up in the previous example. And we're going to add in the red jump and the red power-up. And since the power-ups are instance editable, they're only going to affect the jump that we assign them to. And we're also going to change the red power-up to where we have to collect it twice. This is kind of like simulating in your game there being multiple power-ups scattered throughout your level and being guarded by different boss characters. But here in this video, we're going to save time and just collect the same one twice. So let's open up the level blueprint and see how to do that. Okay, and here on my level blueprint, I have my on actor begin overlap for my blue sphere collision, which we already saw. And then I have an identical one for the red sphere collision. I also had already set the red jump down to 0.70 on the base mod value which means that the special mod value is going to need a total of 0.30 for him to be strong enough to complete that jump. But we wanted him to touch it twice, so I'm going to lower this down to 0.15. And then we'll go ahead and check it out in game. Okay, so we know that we have to come down here and collect the blue power up. And we should make it past the blue jump, no problem. But now let's collect one of the red power-ups and see if we're strong enough to get across. And we almost made it, but not quite. So now we'll go back across and try again. And now we'll collect the second power-up. And now he should be strong enough to get to the final ledge and finish the level. All right, that should be everything you need to get started with nav link proxies. I hope this video helped. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in another video.